Welcome to Pixel History Extra. Here you will find all the extra information you will need on the previous topic. Whereas the previous video was an overall account of what happened, this one will go a little bit more in depth on certain themes or elements from the previous video that deserve pointing out. Consider this an advanced course, if you will, whereas the previous video covered the basics of the same topic. So in case you were intrigued by the previous topic and wanted to learn more about it, this is the perfect video for you. Being an advanced subject, I will also include sources and annotations in this video in case you would like to learn even more about it outside of this video. Let's get to it! The Battle of Teutoburg Forest was a decisive turning point for the history of Europe. If it wasn't for Arminius' intervention and the uniting of the tribes, the Romans would have overrun Germany and possibly the rest of Europe with it. At the very least, later tribes would have spoken Latin rather than Old Germanic, which means the English language might well not have existed either, and the linguistic division in today's Western world along with it. All because of this one military genius. Actually, it's not quite that simple. Though it would be if you were to ask a great many early modern German scholars. Arminius certainly has been praised well enough for that matter. Though Arminius seemed to be largely ignored in any known literature after he was mentioned by Roman authors such as Tacitus, who referred to Arminius as the liberator of Germania in his annals, the German reformer Martin Luther was among the first who was known to bring Arminius back to the collective consciousness of the Germans. Luther, however, referred to Arminius as Hermann, Old High German for Man of War. Whether that was truly his Germanic name is something we will never know, however. So where does this glorification of Arminius, or Hermann, and the Battle of Teutoburg Forest come from exactly? It requires a large leap in time, 18 centuries later, to yet another great general, Napoleon Bonaparte. The Napoleonic Wars left the Germans shamed in their military defeat, which led to a nationwide search for historical heroes who could alleviate the suffering. After a bit of research, the Battle of Teutoburg Forest and Arminius were dug up from the archives, and it proved to be a match made in heaven. Arminius' conflict suited the German historians all too well, for Napoleon had presented himself as a Roman emperor and spoke a Romanesque language. This proved to be a perfect analogy for the Roman incursion into Germania. The concept of a French arch-nemesis was born in the German states, which was dubbed Erbfeindschaft, a traditional enmity. An impressive monument was erected to symbolize this rivalry. At the place where the battle was thought to have taken place at the time, near Detmold, a 57 meters high statue of Arminius was erected, dubbed the Hermannsdenkmal or Hermann's Monument. Facing west in order to confront France, the statue depicts Arminius trampling an eagle on the foot and raising his sword up high. The sword reads a golden inscription that says, German unity is my strength, my strength is Germany's might. A drama, the Hermannsschlacht, or Hermann's Battle, was also made that gained incredible popularity when nationalism became ever more rampant in Germany with the emergence of National Socialism. The monument was even used for propagandistic purposes, with one poster from 1933 announcing Hitler as the new Hermann. Suffice to say that Arminius was a great inspiration to Germans in the Third Reich, serving as the father of the German nation. Due to this contamination with the Nazi regime, Arminius is nowadays a mostly forgotten figure in the history of Germany. Many schools shun his story since 1945 due to his ties with militant nationalism. This attitude has decreased somewhat ever since the discovery of the presumed site of the battle in the late 1980s, but any veneration of the statue is still fairly modest as the stain of national socialism has not yet entirely been washed away. So, throughout the 19th and 20th century, historians generally believed that the Battle of Teutoburg Forest was a decisive point for the future of Europe. But was it really as significant as the Germans have tried to make it out to be in the past? Well, it was significant, alright, but it was only one of several more preconditions that led to the Romans abandoning the colonization of Germania. The initial plans for Germania's conquest arose at a time when the Roman Empire was still in full momentum. Both in the west and in the east, territories were being subdued and brought under Roman authority, so expanding from the Rhine to the Elba River seemed like a logical move. 
When this backfired on the Romans, however, they did withdraw to the Rhine. But at the same time, that did not stop them from returning to Germania under the command of Germanicus. So what kept them from settling there more permanently? Tacitus states that the goal of these campaigns was never to expand Roman hegemony. Germanicus' campaign was primarily led out of punitive interest. In order to restore some of Rome's lost glory, Germanicus was sent to restore faith in the Roman military, as the impact of the loss of three legions resonated all the way to Rome's citizen. The time of excessive expansions had ended, as Augustus' predecessor, Tiberius, even received explicit instructions from Augustus that the Germania provinces were not to be expanded. But it was not due to Arminius and his army of unified tribes that the decision was made to withdraw to the Rhine. Twelve years after the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, Arminius was already killed by a fellow German, and his unified tribes were never really all that unified, as they did not fall under any one single authority. The fact that many tribes felt that Arminius was trying to claim too much power in itself shows how fragile the coalitions were, and that there was no case of any true Germanic unity. The word German was foreign to them, all they knew were their scattered tribes. These are ideal circumstances for Rome's well-known divide-and-conquer tactics, which was the best that they could do. Above all else, however, it's important to keep in mind what really drives the Roman expansions. They were never driven by a desire to simply own more land. Nearly all conquest was done in service of power, and the key to power is a wealth of money. As such, economical benefits are at the heart of considering whether a campaign is worth the effort or not. Since Germania could be considered as little more but a rural hinterland, it proved of no particular interest to the Romans from an economical perspective. It was hardly anything more but one vast forest and swampland, with nothing more but small scattered settlements to represent civilization. Besides that, the Rhine was also easier and cheaper to defend than the Elbe would have been. The Rhine also connects to the Mediterranean Sea, the very center of the Roman Empire around which it is built. The Elbe does not, nor did it have any reinforced settlements or fortifications already built along its waters. All things considered, conquering all of Magna Germania simply wasn't a profitable endeavor. If nothing else, the Battle of Teutoburg Forest helped the Roman elite understand that there is a limit to even their power. They could not possibly hope to own all of the known world. In exchange for this realization, however, this decision did lead to a long period of peace and prosperity, the Pax Romana. This might very well not have been the case had they chosen to stay in Germania, so all things considered they may have just made the right choice. Then again, there are some who claim that such an extended time of peace made the Romans soft and vulnerable to future incursions as it ushered in an age of decadence. If that were the case, Arminius and his victory might have done more for the Roman Empire's downfall after all. Nothing ever is simple or straightforward in history. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the new format and whether I should continue on with it. I'm still mostly just mucking around, so feedback is quite welcome. See you next time.